happy Monday and welcome back to my channel. So this week and next week are gonna be really, really crazy for me because I have pretty much everything due these next two weeks. It's kind of like a midterm critique season. So things are piling up. It's gonna be crazy. And of course, this weekend, right in the middle of all the craziness, I have the Rhinebeck Sheep and Wool Festival. So <laughs> I'm gonna do my best to record this week and next week. This video might be a little bit chaotic, so I apologize in advance, but I'm gonna try my best. I'm gonna knock out all these projects. It's gonna be great. Let's go to campus. My first class of the day is my Dobby weaving class where we've been using computerized looms to work on woven samples for our giant textile collections. Since we only have eight looms in the classroom, we work together in teams to prepare super long warps for all of us to share, which means now that each loom holds samples from many different people. So today's task was to cut the samples off of the looms and separate them so we could each take home our pieces and prepare them for the critique later on in the week. It was so fun to see everyone's work, especially because each person went about the assignment in a totally unique way. So even though we could only pick from eight total warp colors, no two projects were even remotely similar. Here are my four samples that are inspired by my theme of bioluminescence. I used a navy warp twice, a pink warp, and a sage green warp to make my designs. And now I have to take these home and iron them, clean up the edges, label them, etc. I also have to create two more designs for this project, but I don't have to actually weave them and they can just stay as digital files. We then got to work and immediately started making the next set of warps for our next project. We're continuing on with our chosen themes, but this time instead of weaving twills and tissue picks, we're exploring a technique called double weave, which I'm really excited for. So we got back into our groups and worked together to find two warp thread colors that worked with as many people's projects as possible. And then we started winding our new warp. Hello again, I just got out of my weaving class and overall went pretty well. I was really excited to finally see my samples off the loom and to actually like put them side by side and see if they actually work together and feel how the fabric actually feels. So that was great. That definitely was a highlight. <laughs> anyway, I'm now heading to the FIT gallery to go check out that exhibit that I told you about last week. So this exhibit is called Resurgence and it's all about working with your hands, artisanal crafts, and my teacher asked me to contribute some of my pieces. So yeah, let's go check them out. Originally, when I was first asked to contribute to this exhibition, I was asked specifically to bring in some of my works from last year's weaving course. But when I was talking to my professor who's organizing the exhibition, she mentioned that they were missing a few really big pieces that were supposed to be there because of some shipping complications. I don't know what came over me in that moment, but I decided to be bold and I offered to swap out my three little weaving samples for some of my larger handwoven garments just to help fill the gallery. To my surprise, my professor was interested and she asked me to bring in a few options to pick from. So I brought in two of my favorite pieces and she actually ended up displaying both of them. And she even kept my little weaving samples in the exhibition too. So in total, I had two woven garments and a three piece collection on display, which is just crazy to me. And I am so thankful for this opportunity. This exhibit was really beautiful and it featured pieces from both the FIT community and from artisans around the world. It was a wonderful display of handmade works and I'm so happy that I got to be a part of it. I have never had my pieces exhibited before and the fact that my teacher not only wanted to exhibit my weavings from school but also my hand woven garments is just like crazy to me because like I don't know I have it in my brain that those aren't like professional enough or something like this but I don't know it's pretty validating <laughs> it just feels good you know anyway I've got to rush to eat a quick lunch and then I'm gonna head to my art history class We've been exploring Renaissance textiles, so we took a trip to FIT Special Collections to look at some actual historical artifacts, which was amazing. These are real textile fragments that date from the 15th to the 17th century, and we were allowed to handle and photograph them because they belong to a collection intended for research and study. Holding these fabrics and looking at them so closely was such a surreal experience. Each and every thread and stitch was painstakingly made by hand during a time where textiles were considered a luxury. It really made me think about how these days in our world that's so focused on production and speed, we very rarely see anything made with this level of care and craftsmanship. It was just a really nice reminder to slow down and to appreciate the hard work that goes into making things by hand. Again, I just finished up in that class and that was super cool. Like I honestly had no idea we were gonna do that. So I was definitely a fun surprise. 
and there was a moment we were holding these samples and passing them around the room where the teacher was like, yeah, these are all four and 500 year old artifacts. And the whole class just kind of stopped and was like, whoa. <laughs> so that was a beautiful experience. Anyway, I actually am going to a very exciting event tonight. Today is October 10th, 1010. So it is my anniversary with Ryan. We've been together for six years now. So it's our sixth anniversary and our tradition every single anniversary is that we go bowling together because that's what we did on like our first official date so yeah let's go bowling Morning, happy Tuesday. I'm on my way to campus. I have CAD and tabletop and a lot of work to do today. So let's go. I kept working on my collection of prints relating to my bioluminescence theme and I painted some jellyfish just to see if I could make them work somehow. I started by making this print, which I think is really cute, but it doesn't really go with my other designs. It's a little too bright and bubbly and happy while my other prints are much darker and just have a totally different energy, but I'll keep messing around with this and see if I can make something else work. I then switched gears and I started working on my tabletop class, where I made some printouts for my casual collections presentation board. Then I continued working on the look of my formal collection, and I did some more practice paintings until I felt like I had my technique down. Hello again, I'm done for the day. I didn't really record much today just because I feel like I was just all over the place working on a million things at once, but now I'm going to dinner with Ryan and yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, happy Wednesday. I'm in my usual empty classroom and I'm gonna do some more tabletop stuff because I have to do that formal collection. So let's get to tracing. My goal for today was to totally finish painting my formal collection, which is a big task. So I started by tracing all of the components of my collection and then I painted them all using watercolor dyes and gold gouache. I also stopped by the print lab to pick up my mood board for my tabletop projects, as well as the printouts that I made yesterday for my casual collection. These printouts are intended to show both sides of my mug and bowl, as well as what an entire plate would look like when the design is repeated. Everything worked out perfectly except for my big dinner plate. For some reason the print was just off and I have no idea why that happened, but I'll try my best to troubleshoot that later on in the week. Besides that little mistake, I'm really happy with how this collection turned out. Before heading out for the evening, I went to the computer lab and I scanned in my paintings for my formal collection. Hello again, I am finally done painting that formal tabletop collection, which feels so good. I'm just like so relieved to be done. So all that I have left to do is just take those scans that I made and actually like turn them into plates and then make a presentation, which I'm not super worried about. I just need to get it done, but yeah, I'm relieved. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go home, eat some food and probably just Photoshop, honestly. I wish I could take it easy, but unfortunately I just have way too much to do. So I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Good morning, happy Thursday. So I'm heading to CAD right now. I'm just gonna keep working on my prints for my print collection. But then in the afternoon, I actually have my weaving critique. So all the samples are ironed and trimmed and hemmed and they're looking pretty good. And I'm really excited to show them to the class. So 
yeah, it should be a pretty good day. In CAD, I continued to develop that jellyfish print that I started the other day, and this is what I came up with for now. I'm not sure whether I like it or hate it. Is it too weird? Then in my weaving critique, I presented my collection of twill and tissue pig samples. All of these samples were designed using a CAD software called Point Carré, then four of them were woven on a 24 harness dobby loom, and two of them were left as digital prints. And they all relate to my concept of bioluminescence. Part of my theme was to try to emulate the look of glowing without the use of sequins or glitter. So I wanted to play around with some unconventional materials and I incorporated some reflective safety yarns that look iridescent under direct light. This is pretty hard to capture on camera, but I hope you see what I was going for. Overall, I'm pretty happy with these designs and I'm really excited to keep growing this collection with our next project. Hello again, I just got out of that weaving critique and overall I think it went pretty well. It was definitely fun to see everyone's stuff because so far this whole semester, this is our first critique and it's been a couple months. So we don't really know what everyone makes or what their projects looks like that we've been working on for so long. So actually seeing everything together and sharing our experiences was pretty fun. Anyway, I'm not heading to Blick. I have to grab some stuff so I can mount all my dishware stuff for our critique next week. And of course, it's raining on the day where I have to like carry all my paintings and stuff, which makes me so nervous. I have everything wrapped up and I just really hope we make it home. <laughs> okay, it's raining harder, but thankfully they gave me a huge plastic bag. So I'm gonna head home, I'm gonna work on stuff, and then I'm actually going to Rhinebeck this weekend, which I'm so excited about. So. Look out for a separate video that I'm gonna make about my whole weekend journey and yeah, I'll see you on Monday. Okay, actually I'm back for a second cause I got some mail that I'm really excited about and I wanna open it with you. So there's this website my teacher told us about and it's called Contrato. I'll put a link below and pretty much they do like on-demand digital fabric printing and all kinds of things. So I got from them a whole bunch of samples just like you saw the ones that I had in class so these are like all of their different fibers and what they offer and how the prints look on them so I got just like their regular sample pack a leather specific sample pack one for wallpapers and one for natural fabrics some color charts and then the most exciting thing I decided to get my design printed on some velvet and I'm so excited! This is my first time ever like seeing one of my prints on real fabric and that's just crazy to me. <laughs> so normally when you print on fabric, especially like digitally, you're supposed to do like color sampling and tests and that's what these things are for. But I decided to just go for it and throw my file in just to see what it would look like and so I can learn like what to do next time and like what to improve on but I'm actually pretty happy with this and it's so shiny oh I'm so happy <laughs> anyway I will see you one day good morning happy Monday I am dead tired I was at Rhinebeck for the full like seven hours yesterday then I did the two and a half hour drive home and now it's eight in the morning and I'm heading to school. So <laughs> I just need to get through today in one piece. Let's head to Kibbeth. My task for today was to start threading our loom with the new warp that we made last week. But instead of taking out the old warp and re-threading the loom with the new warp, we learned how to tie on the new warp to the old one to avoid re-threading the whole loom. This was pretty much as simple as it sounds and it was very tedious, but definitely not as tedious as re-threading all of the heddles. my weaving class and my art history class, I then found an empty classroom to work in for the rest of the evening so I could finish up my tabletop presentation boards. This was pretty much just a lot of cutting and taping, nothing really fancy, but it was definitely time consuming. And after a few hours, the boards were finally done. This is my casual collection, which is inspired by a book that I found on 19th century gauze weaving. I took the super complex diagrams from the book and I created my own version of what I saw in very bold, simple shapes. 
And then I made it pink and neon green to make it more modern and feminine. This is my formal collection, which also uses the same inspiration of the gauze book and the idea of intertwining interlocking shapes, but in a more sophisticated way. One requirement of this project is that we had to use minimal colors and either gold or silver paint to resemble the gold or platinum inlays that are featured on high-end dishware. So I kept things simple with the muted pink, even though I would have loved to add a pop of neon in there somewhere. And here are both collections together. Which one do you like more? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what you think. Hello again, I just got out of my art history class and then I finished working on my tabletop project, which feels amazing. I haven't really been documenting what that whole experience has been like, but I've just been having so many problems printing out my plates and making them work, like having them like line up because the print lab keeps sending me copies that are like slightly bigger and slightly smaller than they're supposed to be, which like, I have no idea why that kept happening. I just keep sending prints and like they keep coming back wrong. And it's just been really overwhelming and frustrating. So I just kind of have to be okay with it not being perfect just because it's like totally out of my hands and I was at the mercy of the print lab. So <laughs> at least it's done. I'm just like so, so relieved. Anyway, I'm now heading home. I have quite a bit of work that I probably should do, but I am just so tired. So I might like do a little bit of CAD, but probably just call it an early night. So I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, happy Tuesday. I am on my way to campus today and today is gonna be a really full and hopefully very fun day. So I have CAD in the morning and we're actually doing a kind of like informal critique thing where like she split our class into four sections and we're gonna do like mini critiques section by section. So I don't actually have to critique today. My day is on Thursday, but I'm still gonna head to class because I wanna see people's work. You know what I mean? Like I wanna hear the feedback. I wanna see people's stuff. Like I just feel like that's a part of this process, you know? So I'm heading to CAD, it's gonna be really chill. And then I have my tabletop critique, which I'm very nervous about, I'm not gonna lie. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Then after class, I actually have a very exciting dinner date that I'm so stoked about. And it's with Suzanne of Wabi Sabi Weaving, home of Sori San Diego. So she's the one who invited me to spend the summer with her. And I made all those vlogs about my adventures in San Diego with her at her weaving studio. And yeah, she's here in New York this week. We're gonna have dinner. I'm wearing my coat because she has made a matching one. So we're gonna match with our Nora coats and I'm so looking forward to it. So yeah, let's get started on this day. Because I wasn't officially part of the critique group, I just sat in the back row and I quietly worked on my own prints while the other critiques were going on. But then the fire alarm started going off and we had to evacuate in the middle of class. We eventually headed back to the classroom and like not even a half hour later, the fire alarm started going off again. So we were back outside on the curb waiting to be let into the building again. Well, that was definitely a mess, but I did actually end up getting some work done. So that feels pretty great. I also just went to the deli over there and grabbed a bacon, egg and cheese and some orange juice. I'm gonna go camp out in the classroom for a little bit, make sure all my tabletop stuff is good to go and then do that critique. Wish me luck. <sighs> Hello again. I just got out of that tabletop critique and I'm happy. It went well, it went way better than I thought it would. And I am hugely relieved. I'm so happy that we're done with that. <laughs> we can move on to something else, so yay. <laughs> anyway, I'm now heading over to dinner. I'm gonna meet Suzanne and I am so excited. So let's go. Wednesday. I am currently running to Madison Avenue for a tabletop class field trip. We're gonna go look at some showrooms that are related to like dishware and the products that we're learning about making in this class. So it should be a whole lot of fun and 
Hopefully they'll let me film some stuff. Also, I'm wearing a scarf that you might recognize from one of my past videos. I made it myself on my celery floor loom. So I'll put a link to that in this video description. So yeah, let's go. Unfortunately, the first two companies that we visited didn't let us take any photos inside of their showrooms, but I still wanted to share their names and where we went just in case you're interested in tabletop products and you wanna check them out. The third showroom that we visited was for a company called Haviland, which makes very high-end tabletop products and glassware. This is basically the kind of dinner sets that we were aiming to make with our own formal collections. Very detailed, very luxurious, and very expensive with gold and platinum inlays. Seeing what these types of collections actually look like in person was really inspiring and also really intimidating. But honestly, it kind of made me feel better about the kind of work that I like to make because I'm always worried that my stuff is a little too weird and unmarketable, but like, look at this honey jar. It's a gigantic honeybee and it sells for nearly $7,000. If nothing else, this experience taught me that I just need to stop feeling so self-conscious about constantly putting bugs in my work. Good morning, happy Thursday. I am so tired this morning. I have my CAD critique in the morning first thing. I have a break, then I'm weaving, and then I have some special guests coming today. So it should be a pretty good day. I just need to go get some coffee and wake up first. <laughs> I've been really good about making my own coffee every day, but I figured for a critique, I deserved a pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> for this fairly informal critique, we were expected to show up with whatever we had finished in the moment, just so we could get some feedback and finish our collection strong. I showed up with my printed fabric sample and five of six finished prints, and I was looking for some advice about what direction I should go in for my sixth print. And I got some really good advice. Then in weaving, we worked on developing our first double weave designs on our digital software. And I came up with this spotted design inspired by a blue ringed octopus and or a leopard print. This definitely isn't perfect, but for my first time ever designing a double weave fabric, I'm not too bad about the mistakes and I think it'll go really well with the rest of my collection. Hello again, I finally finished up with weaving, which means I'm finally done with this two week kind of like critique period. And I am so relieved. I really need to just like have a nice weekend focus on things other than school and thankfully I get to do exactly that because my parents are going to be in town. So they're actually in the air right now I think and are going to land sometime tonight. I don't know if they'll have the energy to hang out tonight but we're definitely going to have a lot of fun adventures throughout this whole weekend so I'll take you along for some of that. Dad, smile. It's a video. Oh, it's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to stop by FIT to see the campus and to see my artworks in the gallery, which was really special. We were still in kind of a museum mood, so Ryan, my mom, and I went to the Museum of Arts and Design because they had some really interesting exhibits at this time. they also have a small restaurant with really fun desserts and an absolutely beautiful view of Columbus Circle and Central Park. Then the three of us went to go see Phantom of the Opera on Broadway. I am a huge Phantom fan. I've seen the movie musical like a million times. I've read the book. I've seen the Broadway show once before, and I've even played the music in my high school band. So seeing the show with my family was just an absolutely perfect way to end these two crazy weeks. 
Thank you so much for joining me on my two weeks of textile school adventures. If you want to see how my projects turn out, hit that subscribe button and I will see you in my next video. Bye!